We are currently living in the Anthropocene, a label that is used to describe the past seven decades of life on Earth where human beings as a species have become dominant over the physical environment. While our economy has grown and a small number of people have become obscenely wealthy through owning capital during this time, our climate has changed as a result of emitting a tremendous amount of greenhouse gases. Keep watching and I'll explain how we got to this point in 2021, why policymakers have granted concessions to companies to continue to pollute, and most importantly, a new vision for a future economy that works for everyone. My name is Bhavan, and in this episode of Books in 5, we review Overheated by Kate Aronoff. We trust Kate because she is a staff writer at the New Republic and the author of two previous books, where she focuses her writing on climate politics. You should definitely follow her on Twitter. This book investigates how the economic system of free market capitalism, which has largely been accepted by most nations throughout the world following the end of the Cold War, is guilty of producing our climate crisis. If we don't find a way to curb the desire to hunt for profits in the short term and stop the handful of companies that are responsible for the majority of pollution, the societies that inhabit our world will all be impacted with the greatest harm falling on the billions of people who don't have the wealth to survive. There is a particularly pernicious myth that has been utilized by the fossil fuel industry to obscure the massive liability that they would have to confront if we fully understood our climate predicament. The author details how it is not the personal responsibility of each individual to lower their carbon output that will save the world as this narrative allows both the private sector giants such as Chevron and Shell and the state-owned oil majors such as Saudi Aramco and Gazprom to shift the blame onto people. A lackluster approach to climate from governments caused by a wholesale capture of the policymaking process by industrial interests cannot simply be put at the feet of conservative parties being successful at the ballot box. Rather, the book points to a bipartisan consensus amongst political groups across the ideological spectrum that the government does not have a place in regulating pollution to the degree that is necessary to stop environmental disruption. The COVID-19 pandemic led to an extraordinary economic crisis, with millions of people losing their jobs and hundreds of thousands losing their lives. Yet, the elites have come out richer than ever. The author notes that the climate crisis will have similar effects on the unequal distributions of income and wealth. Democracy must be expanded to ensure that an equal apartheid society does not develop between citizens amongst countries and between states themselves. Although they may not be household names, fracking and utility companies are at fault for a considerable amount of damage to the ecosystem. The author recounts how rich white executives got wealthy while their customers, investors, and everyday citizens were left in the lurch through price gouging, tremendous debt loads, and a general neglect of the physical environment that arises when our economy is laser focused on only maximizing profits. The possibility of a Green New Deal to combat the climate catastrophe that we can see forming on the horizon is increasingly entering the public consciousness. However, for all the improvements that came through President Roosevelt's increase in spending on both established and new government programs in the 1930s, many citizens were deliberately excluded. The book touches on the necessity of improving the lives of those who are underserved by past and current policy, including the poor, women, minorities, and the disabled. The thread tying the book together is that the existential threat of climate change will not be addressed if we don't fix our political economy, which is powered by capitalism. I highly recommend reading this book to learn more about the need to overcome the narrative that our political elites will turn their back on fossil fuel and finance companies. So climate is a thing that you make grand pronouncements on. It's a thing that you, you know, create big pledges around. There's been some movement on treating this as like an all of government approach, right, from the Biden administration. But we still have seen, you know, especially at things like foreign policy and the State Department, um, this real sort of firewall put up between what's considered, you know, to be sort of climate policy proper and, you know, what the ways that the state 
actually needs to change in order to, you know, to, to take account for, for this crisis. 